hello, Renee Flamont here. You guys, this topic, this happens to all of us. And it, it can happen to any kind of us. Bright, nice, smart, successful people. It doesn't matter. Any kind of us can be victim to this. And I don't want anyone to think or feel ever that they because they fell victim to listening to the lies or listening to something that the narcissist presents as truth, that that means that they aren't any of the things I just mentioned. Do you know what I mean? It happens to all of us. And there are some new people that are going through the new part of the discard or the devalue. And I think they need to hear this so that they are aware and your ears perk up. I want your ears to perk up if your narcissist does any of the things I'm going to mention because it's how they manipulate the truth. It isn't just outright lying, which of course that's number one. Of course they do that. Of course they do that. That is their staple. That is a tool in all of their toolboxes. It's one that they use the most. It is one that they refer to, right? I knew somebody once, we both know this person that lies all the time. Whether they're a narcissist or not, they just lie all the time. And the person that is in, they said, are their lips moving? They're lying. It can be a habit of some people. They could lie about the weather. They're just in the habit of lying. A narcissist's go-to move is to lie. So you may be right now, and I'm really sorry if I'm doing this to you, but right at this very moment, you could be having a conversation with your narcissist. Well, not right now if you're watching this, but 10 minutes before you started this or an hour after you finished this. And they may be telling you something and you so desperately want to believe it that you do. They could be lying to sell it to you. Another way that they can lie is they can they can use deflection so you are in the middle of trying to find out some truth you found something on their phone and they can say something like well you know what about what you did on Saturday that wasn't very nice seriously seriously Renee like what was that about you see this person and you say hi and there's a big hug and kiss and how do you think that made me feel? Well, that stays with a person. And on and on and on and on and on and on they'll go so far that, that you're way off the, the original topic. Or a narcissist is famous for telling so much detail about the lie that they get eight steps into a different digression which takes you so far off the original topic. Do you follow what I mean? Like in other words, hey, you know, not for nothing, but I see this on your phone, what's this? Not that that's how we'd approach them. We'd, we'd be a little more alarmed than that. But they could say, you know, well, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, you know how that person can be. I mean, did you hear about what she did to her last boyfriend? I hear she's nuts. And she just kept contacting him. And I can't help it if she's contacting me. I didn't warrant that. I didn't do anything. And I mean it. Do you remember that last year? And oh my God. And Jay told me that this happened. Way off the topic. Deflection. They're trying to get you away from what you originally asked. And it can work. It can work if you're not hip to it. Now, automatically, when I hear somebody telling a story that has way too many not related details, it's not just that they're a good storyteller. They're probably beefing up the story to make it sound more believable. You got to watch out for that. Deflection is a big one, right? Also, please watch out, new people, for word salad. That means they're going to say a lot of words that don't mean a uh, thing kind of like what I just did you know why were you doing that the other night at the party I saw you mucking up to that girl hey uh, you know I don't even uh, you know what it's a part I don't even there's no way I'm just friendly this you know I, it bleh. it can come out word salad I can't even like 
think of it because it's such a mess, you should recognize that. When they're not answering you or not saying anything directly to what you're trying to talk about and that what they're saying makes zero sense, that's word salad. They're doing that on purpose to detract you away from you finding out anything that they don't want you to find out. It's lying. It's all lying, in my opinion. Because it's all dishonest, it's all manipulative, it's all calculated to make you believe this when you know you know this. I implore upon you, new people, you're learning this cycle now. I implore upon you, I cannot stress it enough. If you know that this is what you saw and you know that this is the truth, do not allow any of the things I just mentioned or the last few that I'm going to mention to deter you away from that. Now, I'm not saying act like a dog with a bone or rah, 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 like get them angry, put yourself in danger. Some of you, you know, it could be like a physical situation even. I'm not asking you to stand firm in your feet and fight with this person. To be honest with you, when I rewind, I don't think I'd even fight with him now. I think I would like to think it would go like this. Yeah, no, I, I found, I found this on your phone. Ah, no, 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 no. It's don't shh, 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 save yourself. No, it's good. Just go. Bye bye. What do you mean bye bye? Bye. Goodbye. I don't need to hear anything. I don't want to hear anything. I'm not up for excuses. I'm not up for deflection. You can keep your word salad. I'm not going to listen. If you know what you know is true, then there are two things you have to ask yourself. Can you live with it because you know it's true? And do you want to live with it? Because you know it's true. I think oftentimes when we approach the narcissist, we're hoping. Of course we are. We're hoping for them to come up with something that makes sense, that helps us deal with it, that uh, allows us to go forth with this person even knowing this information. We all have done that. We all have done that a thousand times. You go forth anyway, and then you say, oh my God. When it happens again, you go, of course it's going to happen again. Kind of with word salad, and I wish I could think of a good example, but they'll double talk you. Same kind of thing. They'll just say a lot of words that don't really make much sense. Anything to deflect you off of what you're asking. So tell me why, why did you feel the need to do that? Why did you feel the need to go to Boca? Well, you know, you yelled at me, I'm getting old. I just want to be happy. Can't we all just, can't you just love me? Can't we all just love each other? What is the world coming to? Like they'll get off on tangents that have zero to do with the specifics at hand. I don't care for that. And that's being vague. That goes along with that as well. And I don't care for that. Like, I'm asking you something. I know something. I saw something. I heard something. I learned something. This is what it is, and I need to discuss it. I just want new people. I'm trying to really make you understand that just because they might deflect you away from it or double talk you into maybe forgetting what your original question was you have to even if you don't to the person go back to your original question in your mind and you have to decide what you want to do with the information you know it's true we'll just call it boca because i told you that before boca we'll just call it boca i knew boca was true i knew it was Yet I went back in. Right? Ah, geez. Why'd you have to go in there? You're like a PI. You're like a dog with a bone. How'd you find those pictures? Oh, my God. Boy, I don't know whether... And they'll do this. Half compliment you. I don't know whether that means you love me so much that you're so upset or you hate me so much that you're upset. So then they want you to say, oh no, of course I love you. You know what I mean? They'll manipulate you. 
and they'll make you feel bad for them. I've been doing this my whole life. I don't know. I don't know. I have no answers. It's never going to be a straight a straight shooter that you encounter when you're approaching a narcissist. For example, if you have a friend and you're completely, it's a functional relationship. You're healthy up here, they're healthier. And some infraction happens, they hurt your feelings, some, somebody stepped on someone's toe, and you bring it up. I'd like to think that they would, in a very healthy way, say, really, did I do that? Explain it to me. Oh my God, I didn't know it could be interpreted that way. I am so sorry. That's not what I meant. Oh yeah, I can see how it could come off that way. You know what? That's not the intention. That is not what I meant. That's not the message I delivered by stepping on your toe. That's not what I meant to deliver. That was an accident. It was unintentional. It was thoughtless. I wasn't thinking of anything. Now, you'll never get that from the narcissist. First of all, it wouldn't apply anyway. You don't just step on someone's toe is different than you fell into Boca. Like, you don't fall into Boca. That's a choice. For their behavior to go wayward is a choice of theirs. Oh, it just happened. It didn't mean anything. Blah, blah, blah. Didn't mean anything. Well, it meant something to me. It meant something to me. So then you have to decide for yourself. How are you going to handle that going forward? Another thing that they will do very often, very, very, very often, and I want you on your toes for this. They will answer a question with a question. And every single one of my warriors who have been with me all year and who have de dealt with their warriors for 20, 30, and, and 40 years went, Hallelujah! You said it, Nene! Because that's what they'll do. Where were you on for 10 hours? Where did you think I was? I was at work. I was with this one. I went to lunch. Yeah, but that took seven hours. So-and-so said their husband was home by 6 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock at night. Well, what do you think? I mean, what do you think? I had to get gas. I went to the grocery. It's a question with a question. In anything that you, if you hear that, don't answer their question. That's more deflection, isn't it? It's all kind of interwoven. No, 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 no. You're not going to deflect me with asking me a question, and I'm not answering your question until you answer mine. I asked you one first. Well, answer me mine. I asked you one. Who's to say which is more important? Because I'm the injured party, I'm upset, and I learned something. That's why your question is more important. You didn't injure them. You owe them zero at this moment in this argument because you found something. And a, and, and a question, answering a question with a question, that's like tactic 101. You learn that just from watching crime shows and interrogation. They tell you not to fall for that trick. So do not fall for that trick. It's a very old one and they'll use it all the time. Another thing that they do, and I've talked about this a lot because mine was famous for this, um, swear on their life. Swear on their mother's life. Swear on their kid's life. Say things like, may my kids... I can't even repeat what my narcissist used to say. I mean, he would swear on them and say, may this one get sick and die. May that one get sick. I was like, you're lying to me? And you're saying that? And yet, that'll be the same person who's pre pretending to be all Catholic, has a shrine set up in the room, with the dead father, the dead grandmother, holy water, rosary beads, cross, and every more. Are you kidding me? Talk about hypocritical. But you're lying and wishing your family death and sickness to prove a point to me, which in the long run, I don't mean anything to you. So what are you trying to say with me that you're endangering them? Now, you might say, well, is he endangering them? That's really a belief system. He's not really going to put sickness on them for saying that. Well, God forbid he did. That's a terrible thing to do. Swearing on anything? First of all, that's a huge red flag to me. I don't want to be with anybody that does anything like that. 
And watch out for that hypocritical person. I've been with more than one narcissist. And the three that I've been with off the top of my head, yeah. Go to church, mm -hmm. check. Praise at night on their knees to God, check. Said grace before dinner, check. Says prayers in the morning, check. Kept a little altar for dead people in their past? Check. All three of them narcissists and all three lied right to your face. Well, we all know that there are religious people that are hypocrites, of course. But to me, that's like blatant. So you're trying to make yourself feel better by going to church and by manipulating your own truth to look like you are this upstanding citizen who goes to church and prays and... Well, that's a way to woo a girl. Sure it is. I thought, oh, how nice. They seem a little off the wall, but that's kind of solid. Isn't that nice? They pray. They go to church. They say grace. Now, I'm Catholic. I don't say grace. Right? And I'm not a churchgoer. Well, many of us aren't anymore because of COVID. But I am just saying to you that you want to watch the hypocritical behavior because that's a big lie. And it's a huge red flag because what those people, those overzealously religious people are doing, if they're a narcissist, they're trying to sell it to themselves and to the community around them. See how good I am? Yeah. No, you're not going to fall for that. Another thing that they will do, and this to me is manipulating the truth, silent treatment. They're stumped. They're stumped. They don't know what to say to you. They don't know... They'll cut it off. You know what? I don't want to talk about this right now. They might leave the house. They might hang up on you. And you may not hear from them for a few days. And they hope by then you'll cool down. And that you won't bring it up again. And you won't have the same question. And you won't have the same concerns. And you will have missed them from their absence. And you'll forget all about it. And they can go right back to being, you know, in your life. In the capacity that they were. These are just a few, you guys. They do a lot. And I want you to keep your eyes open because they will manipulate the truth in any way they can. Oh, my God, will they? They're never going to come right out and say, I guess, what did I expect him to say? Um, these pictures are time stamped June 27th. You said you were in Bradenton working on the 27th. These are from Boca on the 27th. And I would like to think if that were to happen again, I wouldn't even pose one question. I'm sure I'd give a soliloquy because I can't shut up. I'm sure I'd say, well, wow, that really demonstrates your snake-like behavior, lied to me about where you were the whole weekend, lied. you know what I mean? I'd like to think that I would not even entertain it because what did I expect to say what I said and then have him say, right, yes, you're right, I did go to Boca, I did lie to you, I'm so sorry, Nothing happened, though. We were just taking pictures. I bumped into... Like, what did I expect from him? When you have something that is in front of you, and you know it's the truth, you have to just decide, can you live with that truth, and do you feel like living with that truth? Do you want to? And is it worth it to you to try to work it out with a person who can present themselves one way and lie about it all day long, and not be that way and try to still try to make you think and manipulate your mind into thinking that they are. I just want to mention it. It's very, very vital you keep your eyes open. Okay? Please go ahead and hit sub, like, and share. And thank you for watching.